me and my wife were splitting up. She said she was going to go down to her mom's just to have some time apart. That next Wednesday, she called me and says, actually, I took your son and we moved to Florida with a guy I met online about a month before we broke up. Now she's pregnant with this dude's baby and didn't have a place to live, so I let her move back in with me. We are in full Dr. Phil mode on this podcast. <laughs> Hello? Hey, what's up, man? What's your name? Oh, my name's Taz. Taz, like the like the Tasmanian uh, devil? Yes, sir. Well, Tasmanian devil, what's going on? Well, uh, I've had a crazy last few months, um, and I figured you... I tried calling in to tell you about it before, but you said my phone sucked, so... <laughs> oh, well, your phone sounds good now, so let's hear it. Yeah, well, let's see, about... Say about five months ago, um... Me and my wife were splitting up, um, and she said she was going to go down to her mom's for a little bit um, just to have some time apart because we've been married for about five years and been up each other's But literally the whole time, never spent a day apart. And then she said she was doing that, and I said, okay. She took my son, and they went down probably two hours away. And I... Um, that next Wednesday, she called me and says, actually, um, I took your son and we moved to Florida with a, a guy I met online about a month before we broke up. And he's making more money and he's going to let her be a stay-at-home mom and all this stuff. So she just up and left and took my son from Texas to Florida. And now she's uh, come back to Texas and is pregnant with this dude's baby and didn't have a place to live so I let her move back in with me it's been uh, pretty crazy that's very crazy you let her move back in with you yeah man I couldn't let her just be homeless and live outside and have my son you know I I still unfortunately I still love her so yeah I just I let her move back in and uh, she, how long ago was this? Um, she just moved back in probably two months ago. And is she still there? Yep. And does your son live there? Yeah, my son's staying with me. The dude that she moved in with in Florida, um, he's only three, and he uh, abused him with a belt and all sorts of stuff. So I told her I'm not letting her go anywhere with my son again. The the okay so the guy that your wife left you for, who, who mm -hmm. she met on the internet and living down in Florida, he, you found out he hit your son. Yeah, with the belt, and he's only three. That's fucking uh, sucks, man. I'm sorry to hear that. That's crazy. Yeah, it's all right. It definitely makes my blood boil, and I told her I don't ever want to see this dude because uh, you know a, a father might not react too well to uh, the man that was abusing his son. Um. All right. So, so where where where's that guy? So she's just been living with you for two months. She's pregnant with this guy's kid, and mm -hmm. she's your son. And what she's like? Where's the guy? The guy's just down in Florida. Is she still seeing him? What's going on with that? Yeah, the guy's down in Florida, and she, um. When she moved back up here, she's saying that she wants to get back with me and wants to be with me and all this stuff, but I'm not too sure about all that. But she said that she's still going to continue to talk to this dude, text him and talk to him on the phone and all this stuff. And she didn't care whether I was okay with it or not. And she said that's what she's going to do, but she wants to be with me. She wants us to get back together, and I don't know if Whoa, I really well, want she, to go she wants She wants to get back together with you? Yes. Oh my god, man. How's your relationship with your three-year-old son who's living with you now? Uh, How's that? That sounds good. Yeah, he's the only reason I get up and go to work every day, really. I mean, before I had a family to take care of, and when they left, I kind of felt like I lost my purpose. So I started slacking off at work and showing up late and stuff like that. But now that he's back, I feel like it kind of gives me the motivation to wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning and drive an hour and a half to work every day and back says here says so. here you're 26 yes sir yep god damn man you're more of an adult than i am 
Mm. It's hard, but, mm. you know, if he's back, I'm definitely going to take every advantage of getting to take care of him and don't want to, you know, lose my job and lose my house and then be in a, a predicament, you know? Well, brother, let's talk. All right. What's the, give me, what's your best case scenario? Well, the best case scenario would be that um, she gets a job and we try and work on building trust again because, mm. you know, I'm sure you can tell that the trust is uh, little to none at the moment mm. because of what she did. Um, and like I said, I still love her. She's the, the mother to my, my son. And, you know, I feel like we're we're two halves to a whole. We get, we get along real well. We don't seem to fight and argue. It's just money has always been an issue living in Austin, Texas, and only me having a job. Mm. So you want to, you want to get back together with her and make it, make it work after all this. I do, but I feel real hesitant about it. You know what I mean? Like who, and then what, what is everybody else going to think of me? Like I'm just a pushover simp, you know, just, she, she left and come back and I just take her back. No problem type deal. Hmm. Well, hmm. is how long have you been, uh, not even married, but like together with this, with this woman? So we've been married for five and, and we were dating for two. So seven, we've been together for seven years. Hmm. Me and her are the exact same age. We're only like a month apart. Her birthday's in April and mine's in May. So we're And she's yeah. still seeing she's still seeing this this dude down in Florida who hit your kid? Um, she told me that they're not together and that she doesn't want to be with him. That's why she left him to come back to Texas. Um but she said that he he forced her to stop talking to me. Like he had passwords to her phone and would look at that was logged into her Facebook and Instagram and all that stuff just to make sure that she wasn't talking to nobody else. So he made her completely cut me off and she said that she didn't want to do that. But now that she's back in Texas and she doesn't ever want to go through that again. So she said, she's not going to let me tell her who she can and can't talk to. But if I ever want to look at their messages to feel free that she doesn't want to be back with him, she just doesn't want to have to go to court for the child and all that stuff. So the plan is, is she's just going to give the baby to him, which I don't think is a very good idea after seeing the way that he treated my son. But at the same time, it would be hard for me to raise, you know, this other man's child. And whenever I'm barely even able to take care of me, my son and my wife. We are in full Dr. Phil mode on this podcast. <laughs> um, but man, okay, listen, let me, um, Obviously, this is a crazy situation, but let me tell you. Let me tell you one thing, okay? Um, uh -huh. Shit, what's your name again? I'm sorry, I, I'm stupid. Taz. 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 Um, Taz. Ev from everything that you have told me, um, and I know in your brain, maybe you beat yourself up of of like, oh, I'm a simp or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. You strike me, and I mean this as a guy who has a lot of integrity and care for other people and for his family, right? Because I, Absolutely. you really are, you really are. Because, um, and for better or for worse, in terms of how it affects you personally, but clearly you make decisions with your life that are the most beneficial for your son, right? And you understand Absolutely. and accept the response and embrace the responsibility that comes with being a, a father, which is a, a crazy. I mean, we're the same age, and you're, you know, um, it's a it's a crazy thing to take in and excel at, and you're doing it. And uh, I, I truly, 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 truly commend you for that. And you're making some fucking difficult decisions to be able to do that and so i'm not gonna tell you what to do i mean later i might get frustrated and 
and tell you what to do. But um, I just hope you know that you deserve to be happy and you deserve to live a drama-free life and you deserve to have relationships where you're loved and prioritized and treated well and with respect and I hope you internalize that and understand that and that those truths in addition to thinking about what's best for your son and the people you care about I hope that those truths are what guide your decision making process in this situation does that make sense yeah absolutely okay and that's that's where it's it's hard I, I care about my son so much that I would hate to you know take him away from his mother even though she did it to me or or for him to have to grow up without his mom and his dad even though I still truly love her I mean even though she did this to me I, I still can't change that change that you know what I mean I, I hate her for what she did but at the same time I she's my wife you know I, I do anything for her obviously I let her move back in and she doesn't even have a job and I'm letting I'm paying all the bills and paying for her food and all that Taz do, do you I mean I mean this with 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 respect what how do you how do you feel about yourself um I feel like myself isn't as important as my son you know I I chose to lay down in bed and bring that life into this world. So if it, if it making his life better comes at the detriment of my life, then, you know, that's, that's what needs to be done. He deserves to have a life. You know, it's not his fault that she took off or my fault that, you know, he, she did what she did or anything like that, you know, and I would hate to take that out on him by just leaving, you know, and being like, well, screw you, you screwed me over, you know, I'm just going to take my son and leave like you did me. You know, I just feel like that would be, you know, not beneficial to him in any kind of way. Does a universe of joint custody exist in this situation? It does. And she said that she would never take him away from me again because she realized that that was wrong. But at the same time, um, she, well, I mean, I don't, what would we what would we do? You know what I'm saying? If she were to go back to Florida and we were to have joint custody, it wouldn't really matter at that point. Cause she'd be, you know, five, six states away, 14 hours. So it wouldn't really matter unless she got her own place. Close, you know? Mm -hmm. Who else have you talked to about this? Mm, just like, my my mom but my mom is a drug addict and and doesn't really have the best relationship advice in her life and that's kind of you know one of the that's the only person I, I really have um everybody else tells me that i'm crazy and that i'm i'm crazy strong for you know just letting her move back in like this but at the same time you know they kind of look at me like what's wrong with you you know like why who what kind of man lets his wife leave and lets her come back just pregnant and puts up with it and is okay, I guess. You know, the way most people put it, they think I'm just okay with it, but it's kind of just a situation that kind of landed on my lap. What do you think is best for your son? Uh, I think not being selfish, but I think what I want would also would be what's best for him. You know, if, she could, uh, like I said, I guess I can't really control who she talks to, but um, at the same time, if she's not, you know, talking dirty or, or you know, telling him that he she loves him or that she's going to move back, you know, kind of giving him false hope and stuff, I would hope that me and her can make this work and rebuild trust and move on from it and just kind of look at it as a thing of the past. 
and him to have both of his parents, his mom and his dad, because I didn't have both my parents together. And I remember getting in trouble and being like, you know, screw it. I'm just going to go live with my dad. And I'd get in trouble there. And I'd be like, screw it. I'm just going to go live with my mom. And it kind of really messed my life up because I don't. that's why I don't have any long-term adult friends because I moved so much because I was a brat and my parents had joint custody. Well, all right, tell me this. So, mm-hmm. all right, so you grew up, your parents having joint custody. And was it a similar thing where they were in very different locations no um they probably lived about an hour apart from each other so we would meet up on the weekends and i would go live with the other one whoever i was or go stay the weekends and holidays and stuff with who the parent i wasn't living with okay so understandably that's hard but like what all right when you were growing up what was like your relationship with your dad like on an individual um, basis, have, outside of outside of the joint custody situation and outside of his relationship with your mom, I I absolutely love my dad, uh, especially when I was a kid because I was too young to understand some of the kind of uh, you know living in in Texas and uh, my dad is from from Texas his whole life and he's kind of a racist, kind of sort of yeah he's just really racist and I didn't realize that as a kid. And so as a kid, we were great. I loved him. I looked up to him a lot. But now that I'm an adult and I realize, you know, whoa, some of the shit you said as a kid, that's kind of kind of crazy and whatnot. So I just, you know, try not to I have so much going on in my life already. I try not to let those outside, you know, influences, negative outside influences, you know, weigh in on my decisions because I don't want to be like him. Did he treat you well? Did he... Did he prioritize Absolutely. you, and and was he a, like a, just a good a good dad? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm. And so, but you feel like all the like fucked up shit from your childhood was was truly as a result of them being divorced. Yeah, because if they were together, I could have went to the same school or at least not as many schools and made you know lifelong friends instead of growing up and being twenty six and now I have no friends whatsoever just that's why I've, me and my wife are up each other's butt for four years because she went to a private catholic school and i moved around so much so me, neither me nor her had friends or went out and did anything so if they were together i feel like that wouldn't have happened i'd have had a happier life more people in my life at this age Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Outside of wanting your wife back and wanting to kind of keep the household glued together, what else do you mm-hmm. want for your life? Um, well, I'm I'm currently in a job that I get, um, I'm getting a raise. I'd like to learn more about, you know, trees and, and shrubs. That's what I'm a tree shrub specialist. So I really enjoy learning more about, you know, the different kinds of diseases and insects and stuff like that. So, you know, get a good job and I don't know, I'd like to make some friends at some point, but I don't really know how to do that because I haven't had any friends since school. You know, in school, it's a lot easier to make friends with someone you see in your class every day, but being an adult it's kind of like where do i go and who do i talk to and you know do you just walk up to a random person like hi how are you or what are you doing what's your name can we be friends like that seems a little weird you know yeah that's a that's a whole separate phone call um <laughs> um yeah that's what i want but the, but, the, but these are uh, i mean these are good these are good things to know because i don't I don't know, man. You're in a you're in a you're in a very 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 tricky situation, right? Because here's the thing: mm-hmm. if you didn't have a kid, the answer would be pretty obvious. But you have a oh, kid, yeah. and you, you know, want to do whatever is best for the kid. And I, by the way, and I'm not saying either way. I really, I really am not. I'm really not going to pretend like I, I, I know what's best f- in this situation. But I, mm-hmm. I don't. I don't automatically agree with the idea that 
you somehow need to put up with people treating you poorly and you being in a shitty situation that makes you unhappy uh, is going to automatically be the most beneficial thing for your kid. I don't automatically agree with that. I understand the idea of, of making sacrifices for the purpose of your kid, but mm -hmm. I don't I don't know necessarily where you draw that line. You know what I right. mean? Because oh yeah, I and that's the thing, right? And you're and you're taking responsibility for it, and that's what's so hard about having a kid is because when you do, your life is not it, it, your life really isn't about yourself anymore, and it really is about like how you can you know do what's most beneficial for your kid. But I, I, sometimes. It might be beneficial for your kid for you to be happy so that your kid doesn't feel like you resent them in some way or that you, you know, force yourself into into misery for their benefits. Um... And just also, I, 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 if, if, if I, if you can take away anything from this phone call, and I, and I mean this, and I don't want to be sappy. It's just what I want to tell you from what I'm hearing you talk about. I really think you deserve to be happy, and you deserve to go make friends, and you deserve to not be in in a relationship with somebody who's treating you poorly. I really do believe that and i i think that you can do all these things and still be a good father to your son i don't think that right i don't think that they're mutually exclusive and yeah. I, I, I don't have i don't have the answers but i do kind of want to believe that and i do kind of want you to believe that you know mm-hmm so, I mean, that's that's where I've kind of landed on it. Yeah, that's kind of somewhat of the advice my mom gave me when I told her about all this. She was like, you know, if you and her are in a household and y'all don't love each other or y'all aren't, you know, emotionally connected, that he's he can he can tell that, and he would grow up with two parents that are, you know, not always on the same page or right or just together for him, and it could could you know affect him in the end worse than us separating and both of us being happy and doing the right thing, you know, for right. our own sake. Right. Right. No, that's, that, 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 that's the issue with staying together for the kids is you stay together for the kids and then both the parents are unhappy and whether you want it to or not, it, it subconsciously seeps its way into the entire family dynamic. Right. Yep. So, yep. So, I mean, that's good that you are thinking about that and understand that. Yeah. Well, and, bro, like also, said, just, also, also, you know, ugh, I don't know. I don't know. I want to I wanna, I wanna be careful here because I really, I really do submit to the fact that I, I don't, I don't know what the best way to navigate in, in life is, but, um. Shit! What was I gonna say? I, I, I have, I have too much. Uh, I have. I was looking at. I was. Um. I was thinking about the Hot Wheels game for Game Boy Advance, and that just that just <laughs> intrusively entered into my brain. That was a, such a stupid thing to say. All right. Okay. What was I gonna say? What was I gonna say? Stay with me. Oh, okay. Sometimes, like, just, just. Sometimes it's good enough for you to go to bed at night and go. Um, listen, it, things didn't work out, um, due to factors outside of my control, I wasn't able to give my son this ideal life of a, of a perfect nuclear family that was his mom in the same house as me. Um, I fucking tried my goddamn hardest to be a good father, to do, make the best choices that I could. But it just didn't work out because in fucking life, so not every it's not not, not it can't be perfect, and you can't right. control other people's 
actions and reactions, and you can't control what your ex-wife or wife is is gonna do, and you can't control whether or not these things work out as picture perfectly as you want, but you can do the best that you can and go to sleep at night knowing that you did. Is that helpful yeah, in I mean, any way, hope- shape, or form? Yeah, absolutely, because hopefully, you know, he would grow up one day and I would be able to put it that way to him. You know, I tried my hardest and I really wanted this to work out. And, you know, I feel like in the end he would respect me for that, you know, that I I did everything I could. And hopefully he would understand that. Yeah. I just hope you don't make yourself miserable, man. Like, I I don't think that that's the answer, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I definitely don't want that either. Um, Just kind of at the moment, we're... I'm I'm kind of playing it by ear, I guess you could say, to see whether or not she decides that this is what she wants, you know, because it doesn't matter how much I want this. If she doesn't want it, too, then, if you know, it kind of doesn't matter. So. Is that really what you want? I mean, honestly, dude, I, like I said, I I don't know if it's that I, I love her a lot and I'm just willing to get back with her or it's I'm scared to to be alone you know i've yeah. me and her have been together for seven years and yeah. we've always been she's always paid half the rent and yeah you know always just been there when i come get off work i couldn't imagine getting off work and like when she was gone getting off work and coming home to an empty house or yeah. you know anything like that that'd be uh heartbreaking yeah yeah it's fucking hard um mm. yeah it's fucking hard Oh, yeah. Um, but look, man, I, I've said it a bunch of times throughout this call, and I'll, I'll I'll say it one more: is that you deserve to be with somebody who's appreciative of you and respectful of you because you're a good guy. You know, you you really are. Thank you. I appreciate that. Oh man. Oh jeez. Well, we've both earned ourselves some. Uh, Hot Wheels Game Boy Advance Let's Play videos on YouTube, I think, after this phone call. Here you go. I might look that up just to find out what it is. No, it's not. It's going to ruin your life. Um, <laughs> what's your, what did I say? What, Taz. Taz. Taz, yeah. all right. Before we go, is there, is, there, is there just any other aspect of any of this that you wanted to talk about or any w- way at all in which I can be r- remotely helpful to you or... Any any words of any other just anything? No, man. That's that's what I wanted to call and talk to you about. And you you know, it's really nice hearing from uh, someone else's opinion that isn't you know on drugs. <laughs> so I, feel like <laughs> I can trust your opinion more than a well, uh, the only hey, other man. person I can get. Well, uh, I mean, I'll say that's very assumptive of you. <laughs> no, well, weed ain't a drug. Right My mom now. does hard drugs. Um, anyway, uh, well, do you have any final things you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Yeah, um, life's going to keep knocking you down, but don't let it keep you down. Get back up and keep moving. Try and do what's best for you and, and your family if you got one. Good fucking luck, Taz, all right? Good fucking luck, and uh, God bless you and your family. Yep, Gek forever. Take care, man. You too. Oh jeez, um, yeah, that one's tough. That one's tough. I just hope he uh, makes the decision. Uh, like I've said over the course of the phone calls, I hope he, he seems like a nice guy. I don't have I, I, like I don't I don't have enough. Um, I I couldn't I couldn't be responsible to a child right now. Um, I I really couldn't. Uh, I. And I respect the fact that he can, and that he really isn't isn't like pussyfooting around the whole thing. He's really doing it, and I, I respect that a lot. Um, and I, I I don't th- I don't I don't think it's gonna be easier or better with him being miserable. And the whole thing about like, um, is it better to be alone or with somebody who you don't think you can trust? Uh, of course. Like, all right. The answer to that, the answer to that's obvious right it's better to be alone but 
it, it, it's not so obvious in practice. It's it's obvious to say, but uh, it's hard, man. It's hard being alone. It's hard uh, trying to meet new people. It's hard trying to make new friends, new romantic partners. Um, and sometimes it, it's, it's it's easier to just uh, 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 be in some shitty thing, but uh, it's prob it's probably worth giving it a shot. I'm going to say it's probably worth giving it a shot. What else are you going to do? What else are you going to do besides give it a shot? What else are you going to do? I don't know. I'm just a fucking gecko. Hey, folks, this is Lyle. I am very excited to announce that I am going back on tour in 2024 to do Therapy Gecko Live all across the country. If you've never been to one of my live shows before, they're basically like giant group gecko therapy sessions where people from the audience come on stage to talk to a gecko about whatever they want, just like we do right here on the podcast. Plus, I mix in a few stories and presentations and little tidbits from my own life. Tickets are available right now at therapygeckotour.com or you can find the link in the episode description. I'm announcing many more cities in the second half of the year, but right now, tickets are on sale for Phoenix, Arizona, Louisville, Kentucky, St. Louis, Missouri, Orlando, Florida, Tampa, Florida, Miami, Florida, Boston, Massachusetts, Denver, Colorado, Syracuse, New York, Albany, New York, Hartford, Connecticut, Las Vegas, Nevada, Salt Lake City, Utah, Nashville, Tennessee, Huntsville, Alabama, Chicago, Illinois, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, San Jose, California, San Francisco, California, Portland, Oregon, and Seattle, Washington. And you can get tickets for all of those cities at therapygeckotour.com. If you didn't hear me say your city, you can still go to the link and hit the RSVP button to get notified for when I do come to your city in the second half of the year. This is my third tour so far, and I think it's going to be sick. So I hope to see you there. Thanks. Hi. Hi. What's your name, sir? My name is Seamus, sir. Seamus. What's going on, Seamus? How's life? So um, I'm getting really into, well, I've been really into van life for the past year. So I bought this fucking huge-ass vehicle. Uh, with my partner and uh, it used to be I, we got it on discount because we bought it from a skating company that was like not having very much business um, and so we've been cleaning it out found some gnarly shit in it like a shit ton of mold underneath the seats and uh, a bunch of snacks that look like they've been in there for like ever um, and some guy's phone like a whole iPhone I like how surprised you are that you found uh, a lot of gross mold and food in a old van that you bought. I know. Well, it's only a, it's only a 2011 Sprinter, so like I wasn't, and like we've been like taking it out a few times, and like we've already done a lot of work on it. You know, we bought it around Halloween, so I was just shocked that we only discovered how much mold was in this thing like last week. I'm going to skip to the thing that you texted me specifically about. You said you found an iPhone in this van. And, yeah, I told, uh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it works. And you said you yeah, found out who the o- you said you found out who the owner is, but quote and don't and I'm going to you said quote I want to make the most of this discovery before I offer to send it back to him. Like, ideally, I want to do something funny, but IDK what yet? What do you want to do with this poor guy's phone? When I said that, when I said that, I didn't mean anything unethical. It's like, I don't think or really care if I have access to any of, like, financial stuff or personal stuff. But, like, let me put it in perspective for you. Like, we found, okay, so it's like, last time this thing was turned on was 2015. And uh, it's got old, the old Instagram app. Like, it's got fucking... It has Flappy Bird on it. Okay, by the way, iPhones with Flappy Bird on them actually sell for a lot of money if you want to... That's what I'm saying. (laughs) Yeah. 
Um, so like, you're gonna you're gonna take a picture of your cock and make it the wallpaper and then give it back to him. I think he would probably find that funny, but I'm not going to do that because of the legal ramifications. What, what is it? What is it about the wh- in the limited information you have about this man? How did you come to the conclusion that he would find that funny? Um. Okay. I mean, like. Uh, we, it's not like I, me and my partner, like, looked around for specific stuff on this phone. But, like, just scrolling through his photos, like, he took, like, nudes <laughs> with, like, his friends. Okay. Like, just nudes with his friends. Like, okay. there's a picture of some guy's ass on it. Listen, can I just say something to you? And by, this is not a judgment on you. Um, okay, okay. It's not. It's really not. Because I would do the same thing if I found an old fucking iPhone because I'm nosy and curious. I would do the yeah, same yeah, thing. Yeah. This is not a judgment. This is not a judgment. <laughs> But if you're gonna go through the guy's photos and his life and his thing, just stop being holy about it. You just you're doing it. It's fine. But just stop being I like am we're not doing gonna it. just stop being like we're not gonna do anything unethical. We're just gonna go through his photos and his bank oh, accounts. Oh, dude, and no. When I say just when you I, just when you, I, it's okay. It's again, it's not a just 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 do it. Don't you don't have to be like cool about like, it. You can just no you can no, just no. Do when it, I you know? say when I say I'm not gonna do anything unethical, I mean like I'm not gonna like rob the guy and send or like send all of his money to like. A Bitcoin account or something. Okay. Anyway. Um, all right. So you were looking at pictures of this guy's penis on his phone. Yeah, his ass. Yeah. And uh, no, it's really interesting. So like he's um, we had no idea who this guy was. He had nothing to do with the skateboarding company mm-hmm. that he uh, that we bought it from. But I'm assuming that he was at one of their events because like we found his license in the car, too, which is just really weird. Anyway, we looked him up on Instagram by, like, finding out what his, like, current, like, like, looking up what his past accounts were, and, like, I just found him tagged in a post, and he's been posting, like, car and skateboard content for, like, the past 10, 15 years, so, like, yeah, it's, like, definitely the same guy, and I looked at a video from, like, nine years ago on his account, and there's a video where, like, the same van that we have today is in it, and it's crazy. Nice man. So I mean, so this guy's not dead. No, he's very he's he's alive, and he's uh, he definitely lives in California, and who knows? Yeah. And I just figured, you know, if I was this guy, like I would totally want a phone that I had like ten years ago. God only knows how he lost it on airplane mode, like in the van. But yeah. Uh, when you hand it back to him, are you going to tell him that he has a nice penis that you saw on his phone photos? I should totally tell him that. Yeah, no, that, oh, shit. Yeah, that's another weird thing is, like, you know, it was at a battery when we found it. We plugged it in. It was crazy that it worked because the screen was fucking shattered. And uh, there was no password or anything on it. So just, like, for future reference, like, always keep a password on your phone or else some rando will find it 10 years later. <laughs> and then Always like, keep a passcode on your, your phone dick. or else some weird guy might look through your Yeah, some weird guy. Notes. Yeah, and then you'll call a gecko about it and like tell the whole world. Um, so, I, I, so I still want to, we have to address this. You claim that you want to do something funny with the phone before you give it back. What, what, if, what, if, what are some of your ideas for this funny thing you want to do? I was hoping you would have ideas, to be honest. But like, I have no ideas at all. Um, <laughs> something funny. Something uh, funny. Oh, okay, all right. I got one. Go into his voice memos okay. and record a fart. <laughs> and Dude, I think I'll all, do that. And then make make all the ringtones farts. Yeah, that's kind of. That's I'll a record funny. like myself farting into the mic, like with my voice, and I'll change it to like. I'll, I'll record a different part for everybody who calls them. I think that would be smart. Do you have a job? Do you have, like, what do you do all day? I'm at my job right now. Yeah, I work in accounting. That's cool. So how's the van life? The van life? We haven't got to that yet. I mean, like, um, oh, what is the van like? Is that what you said? No, what, how is van life for you? How is it going? Oh, I'm not, I am not doing that yet. My lease is going to be up in like November this year though. And you know, it's been, it, it would be pretty hard to live in a van considering the old situation up until this weekend anyways. But, um, yeah, I am, I currently live in a PNW, um, and I'm hoping to just like travel around. Um, you I've wait, got, like, wait, a wait, 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 you live in a BMW? No, in the PNW, in the Pacific Northwest. 
Oh, I'm dumb. Okay, I thought. Okay, no, no this okay. definitely this ha this has this has PNW energy written all over it. That's that's kind of where the oh my god shit you're right is is a thing. Um, so when are you when are you expecting to get all the uh, mold out of there? Or oh, the are, mold you, is are all you even out. gonna get rid of it? it? Sounds like you're sentimental about it by now. Oh no, I I mean like I I I kissed the mold goodbye first before I blew it away and vacuumed it. Um, but yeah, no. Um, so this. Yeah. <laughs> no, the mold is all out. It's just like, I got to build the thing now. It's kind of scary because I got to like cut a hole in the ceiling to put a ventilation fan in. And like, there's just a lot of like handyman type work you got to do to do this thing. And I have never done it in my life. Mm. Um, well, what has your partner? What does your partner have any ideas of how you can uh, fuck with this poor guy who left his life? In your hands? No, unfortunately, she, she doesn't. Does she have know? Any funny does she ideas. even know about any of this? No, she knows about it. She absolutely does. I actually told her, like, don't message a guy yet because I want to know if, like, the if therapy gecko or the people of the Gek Nation have any ideas of what to do with it with with this poor man's device. Um, what's your partner's deal? What's she do or he? Uh, she works in an office. She, uh, you know, similar stuff to me, like just uh, clerical work. Um, but it was kind of her idea to do the van life thing. Do straight is par partner? Do straight people do partner? What's 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 the deal with? Yeah, that? no, yeah. Well, at least like I do, because like because saying girlfriend or boyfriend forever just sounds like really like childish to me. So like you know, it's like. I'm not at the stage where we're, we're like married, but I feel like partner is just a better word. What happened to significant other? That's too many syllables, man. Yeah, I guess. All right, that's a, yeah, that's a legitimate argument. Sure, I feel that. Um, yeah, I guess you don't. How old are you? I'm 23. You're 20. You're 23. Uh, you, yeah. you, can, you can have a you can have a girlfriend at 23. That, no, 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 I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of flip back and forth between coloring or my girlfriend or my partner. I don't know why. But we're, like, been, living um, together. All right, that's fair. I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm... No, that's okay. I'm yelling at you. I have no reason to yell <laughs> at you. Um, I Maybe you, you feel bad, because if it was your phone, you would just, like, want it, want it, like, sent back to you with all the app pictures and everything. Well, if it was my phone... That would be bad. <laughs> Good thing you have a password. What's your name again? I assume you have a password. My name's Seamus. Seamus, uh, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? No, wait, but I did want to ask you a question. Um, just a real quick question before before I go. Where are you from? Where am I from? I feel like you're trying to yeah. hack into my bank account. I don't trust you. No, 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 no. But, like, my, my main question is, like, are you from Chicago? Um, why do you want to know if I'm from Chicago? I wanted to ask, I, I don't know what your what accent you have, but, like, I wanted to ask if you put ketchup on your hot dogs, that's all. Do I, okay, of course, yeah, of course I put ketchup on, my, ketchup on my hot dog. Oh, thank God. Yeah. Okay, tight. <laughs> what do you, now I feel like you're using that information for something. No, I'm not. Do you want me to? You know what? Yes, I do want you to. I want you to use that information okay. for something. I want you to find a way to use the information that I put ketchup on my hot dogs for something positive. Not Don't use it to hurt I will anyone. use it to make the world a better place. Honestly, honestly, if you can find a way to use the information that I like ketchup on my hot dogs to hurt someone... Do that. Oh too. no! Oh. I don't. I can't. My imagination. Maybe your imagination is. Um, <laughs> my imagination isn't mine. good. I couldn't even. I couldn't even figure out something funny to do with the guy's phone. Now I got to record these parts. No, I'm still here. I'm just thinking. Um, all right. Thank all right you. Well, you're who I now think everyone in Portland is. Okay. Hi. Is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? No. You have a good day, Gecko. Hey, you too, man. 
Take care. Thank say you. say hello say hello to the phone guy for me. Uh, I will. I will. Later. Bye. Hello. Hello. Oh my God! Is this the Gek? Is this line? Yeah. Who is this? Oh, uh, my name's Darius. Darius, how's it going, Darius? Yes, I am amazing right now. How are you? I'm okay. I'm hanging in there. What's uh, what's going on with you, Darius? Uh, you know, not much. Just in the middle of, I guess, I just finished washing my face. But yeah, I mean, I guess we can talk about what I texted in about. Go ahead. All right. So, uh, how do I start? Okay. So, I don't know. This is like two, two ish years ago. I was seeing this girl and I'd been seeing her for like two weeks or so, you know? And then one night I came over and then she had to leave early for work. And so I stayed and slept, you know, just didn't get up and then I wake up like I end up going to the bathroom in my dream which you know is a trap as always but so I did that and I woke up and I was like oh shit you know I just pissed the bed and so yeah um sorry this is really cool um anyways I woke up and then I'm like shit what am I gonna do because this is like fucking weird like two weeks in I hadn't pissed the bed since I was like 12. And then so I I just grabbed your sheets and like was like, hey, I spilled orange juice on your sheets. And because I always had a bottle of orange juice on me around that time for some reason. But anyways, I was like, hey, I spilled orange juice on your sheets. Um, I'm going to take them and wash them. And she's like, oh, OK, you don't have to do that. I was like, no, I'm going to I'm going to do that. You know, it's uh, I feel bad if I don't take care of it. And then so she's like, okay. And so this happened. I got her sheets back to her, whatever. And then so, yeah. Two weeks later. So you pissed a, a, you pissed a, you pissed a girl's bed. Yes. Okay. And uh, what? How did she respond to that? She uh well she didn't like know at first, and then like two weeks later, she made like a comment like a joking comment like that somehow related to that she's like oh yeah like what if you piss my bed or whatever and then so like i thought i'd gotten away with it and then so like i had this nervous look on my face and kind of hesitated and then she was like you did not like did you actually and then i kind of fessed up to it so i was like yeah like i pissed your bed but i took care of it so it's like it's all good and yeah what did she say? What did she say? It was so long ago. She laughed, which is a valid response. And she's like, you're kidding. And I was like, uh, I wish I was. This is really embarrassing. And then, yeah. How, how long did you continue to date her after this? Uh, we're still dating now, so, I mean... I oh, well, fucking out. Jesus. All right. Yeah, you know, it... See, that's nice. That's I really, think... like, what you want out of a relationship, I think, is somebody who yeah. you can p piss their bed. Some people like it when you piss their... Some people like it when you pee on their face, actually. There's a whole website of people <laughs> who, um, who are, like, trying to find somebody to do that to them. Um, all right, so you're still dating this. You see, you okay? Because you teed this shit up like it was your, um, you know, uh, it was it it uh, was this was just some girl. This is you've been dating this girl for two years. That's pretty great. How many more times in the two years have you pissed um, her bed? There was one. Well, there's one night I almost peed my bed. Like I drank way too much water, and then it was just like leaking. But that didn't really count i guess uh it almost happened i think it almost happened one more time since then tell me about that wait so so uh uh how's the relationship going is it going good yeah it's really good i'd say 
Okay. Has she ever pissed the bed? No. She almost sharded one time, though. Oh, okay. How would you react if she sharded? I thought it was funny. I was really hoping she did, because, like, she tried to fart, and then she, like, jumped up out of the bed. Like, oh, my God. I gotta go to the bathroom. I was like, oh, no way. Did you just shart? And... She just ran, ran out of the room. Hmm. Hmm. Um, I, I mean, yeah, that's a good sign of, of a relationship of, is one where you can, uh, you guys can piss and shit all over each other. And I mean that, yeah, I'm, not, exactly. I'm not even saying that in jest. I think that's healthy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, uh, what, what else is going on? Not much. Um, Looking for a new job, but you know, there's a sense of comfortability in that. There's job. a sense of comfortability in that. Um, like uh, having having. Do you uh, do you guys ever go to the bathroom with each other? Does she ever like sit on your lap while you while you take a shit? <laughs> no, I tried to convince her to let me like pee while she's peeing, but she she won't go for that like you try to like it's hard to it's kind of hard to cross streams with a chick yeah because i like a, a man and a woman crossing streams i feel like that's that woman would have to be in quite a uh, uh an uncomfortable position yeah i was thinking like she's just sitting on the toilet and then like kind of like man spreads a little bit and i Oh, oh, okay. Actually, that's kind of interesting. Okay, so she sits, you stand, and she leaves. There's like a, a but you have to have a very precise aim, or else you're just gonna like start peeing exactly. onto her vagina. Exactly. That's cool, though, man. That's a fun date idea. Next time, I, I, next time I Google, next time I Google, um, next time I Google exciting date ideas in New York, I want to see pissing on each other on the list. That, that, I hope so too. I hope we can make that happen. What's your name again, sir? It is Darius. Darius. Darius, how did you feel about this phone call? Do you have any? I I want to start doing like a, you know how you do a customer service line and then they're like stay on the phone for a survey. I'm gonna start doing that, but just um, it's on the actual per- the person who gave you customer service just asks you and so you can't you have to lie to them and say it was good what uh, what would you any pointers any thoughts feelings sentiments no this is your I mean, time to I provide was, feedback no it was great i mean i was a little shook up because i wasn't expecting the call but yeah i mean it was great i have no no pointers that i can think of at least okay well um Darius, you seem like a nice guy. I'm glad that your relationship's working out. And, um, you know, I'm excited for your wedding day where you can really just consummate that marriage with a, uh, 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 just eating her shit full on. Yeah, we'll, we'll try to make, we'll try to make something wild happen that day. Take care, Darius. You too. Hello? Hi, what's your name? Hey, my name's Miranda. How old are you, Miranda? I am 28. How's life? Um, you know, it's going pretty good. Um, I feel like I'm doing a lot for my age, though. <laughs> um, I guess in kind of like weird ways. Um, I guess like a little background story. So I told you that like, so I got into playing Sims recently. It's a big thing right now. Uh, right. So uh, I usually do that when I'm high, but I recently stopped doing THC um just like personal reasons I feel like my sleep's not as great I feel like I can't like function as well you know like you know all the all the things that go along with that right yeah of course. um but yeah so basically like me and my husband we both have like adult jobs and we bought a house and he's a manager I'm like in charge of people and we're both like 28 and I'm like I feel like sometimes I wish I could just like slow down you know have like a a normal life normal things to worry about (laughs) you know what I mean I'm confused uh you say that you all right you're married that's great 
You yeah. have a job. That's great. What about your life? Do you feel to be so uh, abnormal? I guess, like, I just wish that, like, sometimes, like, we could have slowed down and, like, you know, enjoyed our 20s a little bit because we both just, like, graduated college and just kind of, like, hit the ground running. We were like, okay, what else, what else, what else, what else? You know what I mean? So, like, we've just been, like, checking off all these boxes and not really, like, taking time to, like, slow down and, like enjoy our 20s before yeah. kids and all of the things, you know what I mean? So it feels like we've kind of almost wasted that time that we had. Do you have kids? Does that make sense? No, not yet. No. Oh, oh, well then what the, go quit your jobs and move to <laughs> Thailand. Who gives a fucking shit? What do you, That's um, kind of what, what do you, like what do you, do. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. So, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, no, you don't, you're not, yeah, if you don't have kids, you can do whatever you want. Um, Kind of. If you don't have kids, you can do whatever. Oh, I mean, you, you, some people abandon their kids, which, um, <laughs> I mean, you can you can do that. That's an option available to you as a human being. But mo some people think that that's not cool, and uh, they have a legitimate argument when they say that. But you can do it. Um, right. What was I going to say just now? I was going to say something. Don't wait. Okay, you said you. Get specific with me here, Miranda. What exactly do you want to do? Because I understand the idea of like a um, vague longing, right? But the mo if you if you uh, swat away the fog of that vague longing, maybe you'll find a specific thing that you want to do, and maybe after that you'll realize, oh, I actually can do this. You know, so. So wipe away the smoke yeah. for me here real quick. What's what's the what are some actual things you want to do that you feel like you cannot do? Well, I guess like my biggest thing is I just like I guess like I just feel all of these outside pressures from like family and friends. So like that's kind of what I mean about like putting life into perspective and I feel like we kind of like wasted the time that we had like in our earlier 20s, like not traveling and like just saving money and like being super cautious about everything all the time versus like, you know, quitting our jobs and moving to a city and enjoying life and meeting people and creating our own like kind of way. We just both kind of fell into that cookie cutter, like graduate college, be successful, get a house, start a family. But like now that we've graduated college and we've got a house, like now our family is kind of like pressuring that like whole like okay when are you gonna start wait, 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 wait. like your like your like your parents yeah yeah like just tell your parents I mean, to, fu like my tell your parents to stuff, fuck so. off man you're hold on <laughs> hold on i look i get it. everyone has different relationships with their uh, family but like dude you have you have money right you have a job you have money you sound like you have an adult job that pays you adult money yeah, so, like, that's the hard part is, like, it kind of goes beyond, like, just our parents, too, because, like... Do your, pa do your parents do your parents, it... do your parents give you money still? No, no. Oh, okay. We're completely, okay. like, independent from them. Listen, yeah. if you pay, listen, if you pay your water bill, you if you pay your water <laughs> bill, you can tell your mom to go fuck herself. That's, that's what being an adult is. Yeah, no, I get you. That's kind of what we're... That's kind of what we've been doing, uh, is just, like, hey, like, we're not... We don't even think we want to do that. Like, we'll do it on our own terms type thing. But, like, it's just kind of increasingly getting harder to, like, make friends as well. Especially, like, going... Because, like, my husband will be 30 this year and I'll be 29 this year. Right? So, like, a lot of our friends, especially friends that we meet, like, in our community, um, have kids, like, around our age. Like, yeah. well, the people are around our age and they're starting families and they're starting to have kids. And then... It's almost like they get offended if we say, like, that's great, you're having kids, and, like, I'll buy your kid a birthday present. But, like, I don't really think that's something that I want to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's just becoming increasingly harder to, like, meet people and make friendships, like, where we're currently at. Yeah. Does that make sense? It, of course, yeah, it definitely makes sense. Uh, it's it's a pr something I struggle with. I'm trying to figure out how to make more community in my life it used to be easy and now it, it feels like it requires a lot more uh thought and attention but exactly. i mean okay but you're but i guess miranda like we're you just took me through five different conundrums um, <laughs> exactly yeah. so let's start with i mean let's just do this one right is like the pre like pressure from your f parents um 
I mean, you you seem you sound like a smart person, and so you're aware that your parents, like you're like you're aware you're the only you and your husband are the only one that have to live your lives, right? Right. And so, who gives any amount of a fuck about the opinion of any other person that doesn't have to live your life? Right. I mean, I guess it just comes from, like, a place of, like, I've always been, like, just such a people pleaser. And so, it's kind of what I mean about, like, just kind of putting, like, time into perspective with your life. Like, I know I keep saying approaching 30 and, like, I've, you know, one day we're well, stay, probably stay, hopefully going to be stay, way older. Just, 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 just stay, stay on this particular topic with me because now we're talking okay. about getting older and, and whatnot. Let's talk about, like, like, like. There's it, okay. There's pressure and influence from like people, and then specific people yeah. like your family, and there's like pressure and influence from s- what is generally s- societally accepted as the right. normal life of a certain people of a certain age, right? Mm-hmm. So I mean, just stay with me real quick on the family side of things. What, sure. what, uh, what's the block there? I guess like just because I've always been like. I've always been like a goody two shoes with like my family and I've always done like what they want me to do. And so like me standing up for myself and like what I want for my life, it like obviously upsets them, which again, I'm learning to not care, but it's like one of those things where I've just, I've never done that before. So it's uncomfortable to be like, Hey, actually that's not what I want. And I have to like be okay with that backlash. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Um, I'm, uh, there's no, I, there's no, uh, magical spell that I can put right. upon you to give you the courage to be okay with that backlash, but, um, I, I think it is, it is a worthy thing to learn how to deal with, for sure. Yeah. Um, all right, so there's that. And then there's, um, like we talked about, the just general, societal pressure for your life to be a certain way at certain ages um which uh is legitimate is a legitimate form of pressure i mean i guess all these are legitimate but um yeah it's something everyone fucking thinks about um but again but it all comes back to the fact that nobody you know in the comparatively to like the sun and stuff, we're all little little babies, right? So, mm-hmm. um, at the end of the day, society doesn't have. You, at the end of the day, you're the only one that has to live your life. So, mm-hmm. what ki- what kind of i what kind of life do you want to live? You want to travel? Where do you want to travel to? Right? Like, like some of these things, like there, the, you get, you can just find yourself crushed under the weight of this horrible, ambiguous, uh, uh, boulder. I was trying to think, I was going to say rock, but by like boulder better. Um, boulder of, uh, societal expectations and, oh, I want to do that. And just vague feelings, but you can Mm -hmm. actually attack some of those vague feelings by trying to travel a little bit more if you can figure it out with your job do you do you work remote what do you do yeah so i work from home full time so that's like another positive so that was like one thing i changed a couple years ago um my previous office was talking about going back and i was like i really don't want to do that because i feel like i get way more like out of my afternoons and my weekends because i can do chores while I'm at work or do things like this while (laughs) while I'm at work. Don't tell my boss that. Um, But you know what I mean? Like, I just, I feel like I can stay on top of like the mundane things and then I can enjoy the time that I have when I'm not working. So what are the, what are the mundane things? Like, you know, like laundry dishes, like all the things that we all do, you know what I mean? Like keeping up with wiping down the kitchen countertops and unloading the dishwasher. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like going to the gym a couple times a week, like that sort of stuff, you know? Yeah, like one of the sacrifices of. I've learned this through uh, touring and trying to travel a lot of my own personal life. One of the sacrifices of of trying to travel more is that you uh, you got to be okay with doing a little bit less laundry than maybe is socially acceptable. 
Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, maybe I, you wear you get maybe you wear the same pair of underwear. Um, <laughs> well, maybe four times in a row is egregious. I've done that before, but uh, you know, a few <laughs> days in a row, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that is, like, one thing we're, like, hoping to, you know, change in the upcoming year. Like, we both renewed our passports, and we booked a trip to Japan and a trip to Europe. Oh, and wonderful. All that stuff. So, like, oh, we've great. both never been out of the country, though, so it's going to be a little bit of um, a shock, I'm, I'm afraid. But, I mean, like I said, we're both always too careful, so I feel like it'll be good for us to kind of, like, step out and just go explore and check out what, you know, what other places have to offer, you know? No, nah, that's going to be awesome. No, all right, so you're already doing it. You yeah. don't need a gecko to tell you how to live your fucking we're, life. We're trying. You're already doing it. <laughs> we're doing our best. But, yeah, it's just like, I, I don't know. It's just been something I've been, like, studying with a lot recently. It's just like, how do you, not you, like, specifically, but just, like, how does a person, like, a young person, like, fight those expectations? I mean, it's not, it's not that it weighs on me, like, 24-7, but you know what I mean? Whenever I go to Thanksgiving and everyone's like, oh, you're married and you have a house and you have a good job, so, like, why do you not want kids? And then you have to, like, explain it to them, and then they still don't understand because, obviously, they're boomers, and that's just the way that they were raised is get married, have kids, start a family, but it's just, like, but you should, you I don't should know. Take I, like, I, I think <laughs> that you should take advantage. Everything that you have going for you in your life, generationally even, is, like, take advantage of it. Right, you're still young. Yeah. You don't have any kids. You work from home. Fucking hack it, you know. Go. I mean, you're. I, I don't even. Yeah. You, you don't even need me to to motivational speech you because you're already doing it. You already have the plane tickets booked and the passport and all that stuff. So I mean, I, it sounds like you're doing what you want to do. So that's that's pretty great. Yeah, it's just a matter of like, like I said, like I'm just like a recovering people pleaser, which I'm sure a lot of people can relate to. So it's just. It's like I'm doing all these things, but at the same time, like, I feel kind of, like, not selfish about it, but you know what I mean? Like, I'm just like, should I be doing something else? Like, I don't think I should be, but at the same time, like, I overthink it sometimes. So it's just, like, my thing is, like, I just don't want to waste time, like, you know, especially, like, in your younger years. And um, I don't know. I just, like, I think about the big picture a little too much instead of, like, just impulsively living life. Does that make sense? It does. It does. But, um, I don't, I don't know why my takeaway, I don't know why my takeaway <laughs> from this phone call is that you should do the dishes less. Uh, maybe it's not, maybe I'm just projecting because I want to feel less bad about all the, uh, paper plates I've been using lately. Um, I was Mar actually loading the dishwasher when you called, so maybe I'll just wait. <laughs> Miranda, <laughs> is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? No, I mean, not really. I just make sure, like, the friendships and stuff that you have, like, count. If they're not productive, you know, there's no sense in maintaining those and find people that align with your values, you know? Have a good rest of the night. I wish you good luck on your journey. Have fun in Japan and Europe. Those are great places. Thanks. And, uh, I will, for sure. Enjoy... Uh, are we, Wait, we this we first started talking about this because of The Sims, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know why that like really triggered it, but I just got really stressed like playing The Sims, and I was like, oh my god, there's not enough time in the day, and then I gotta chase these kids to like do their homework, and they're failing school now because I'm too busy with like everything I'm doing or what. <laughs> so I'm like, whoa, 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 wait a second. So I don't know. I was just I got way too high one day, and I was playing it, and it just like all clicked for some reason. Um, yeah. Anyway, it was just a Shout small little like, puzzle piece. Yeah. Just play it, you know. Have a good night, Miranda. But yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you know, hey, well, here's the thing. You guys ever go on uh, Instagram and you see all those travel influencers who are going all over the place? And next time you see a really hot Instagram couple who uh, is traveling all around the world and... Uh, scuba diving in Greece one day and uh, at the Great Wall of China the next day. Just remember, when you look at them, that they have been wearing the same pair of underwear for several days. It's important to know. Hello, folks. It's Lyle here. That's the end of this episode. But get this. I'm releasing a bonus episode 
this week. That's right, an entire extra hour of the podcast that you can listen to by becoming a premium member of Therapy Gecko over at therapygecko.supercast.com. Supercast subscribers get access to bonus episodes. They get a completely ad-free podcast feed of the regular show. They get recordings from my live shows, members-only streams, and they help support my ability to continue doing this podcast. So here's a clip from this week's members-only bonus episode. For me, when I feel like I'm quote-unquote normal, I feel like the most happy. I know that sounds Mm. backwards, but... Tell me more about what makes you feel normal. For instance, like, if me and my friend go to the gas station and I want to buy something, like, I feel normal, like, because I really don't have much money because I'm... Mm -hmm poor college students. So like I find mm-hmm. the opportunity to go buy, even if it's 79 cents, mm-hmm. that makes me feel quote unquote normal. Mm-hmm. Instead of like mm-hmm. uh, having him to pay for me or, or whatever, you know? I don't think that sounds backwards at all. I completely understand where the happiness of that moment is coming from. I don't think you need to climb to Mount Everest or do some crazy thing to feel happy. I think the best you can get is really siphoning the the beauty and the happiness from something as as normal as being able to afford a, a candy bar when you're going out to the gas station with your friends. If you want to hear this full conversation, you can sign up to become a premium member at therapygecko.supercast.com or find the link in the episode description. That's therapygecko.supercast.com. All right, I have nothing else to say.